Well, hi guys. How are you? I haven't filmed in like two days because I've been working. But I have been checking on my babies down here. And I'm glad you all liked the idea with the smaller um, heat mats. I mean, I don't know if other commercial worm farmers do it that way, but... I don't know. My instincts just tells me to try it like this first. For the reason of if they want to move away, they can. I'm giving them the choice. And, you know, so far, it's working fine. It, it is working fine. Over here, I had some coconut coir uh, soaking. I poured a bucket of, of water in here, and it look, it absorbed it. So what I do is I just let it sit here. I crumble it up so it doesn't get moldy. Even though, honestly, I've never seen coconut coir get moldy. But you never know. And um, just use it as I go. I do like to use peat moss over that to set up a breeder bin. But I don't have peat moss. I only have enough for shipping worms. I don't have enough to, like, make entire bins with it. And right now, with winter coming, I looked at peat moss online, the 2 by 2 square footage, whatever cubic that thing is. I usually pay, what, on Lowe's or those type of stores, I pay like $12, $13. They're like $40 or more with $200 shipping. <laughs> I laugh because I'm like, what? <laughs> no. So, guess what? Y'all are eating coconut coir to the spring so and it'll be fine that's another food alternative i mean some people can't get peat moss wherever they are and they only get coconut coir so it's good it's good i got this uh, number three tub of breeders here and i'm still letting it dry out a little bit but today we're going to harvest some because i need to set up some breeders either in my breeder bins here or i need to get the cocoons out and put them behind me on the wall to start hatching um mr pumpkin is still hanging out <laughs> i still see worms down here because what i think is happening even though this doesn't have a hole in it i think microbes are on it and they're eating it so they're really enjoying mr pumpkin but i believe in my last video i told you that i'm gonna puncture a hole in it so i'm gonna go get a pair of scissors and I'm going to puncture a hole maybe down here so that it can start moving along as far as decomposing. Because honestly, I'm sick of looking at it. <laughs> I know. Guys, I've had so much coffee today. I, you know, I'm obsessed with coffee. I just do. I love it. I love it. I love it. If you all want to buy me a cup of coffee, which I don't know if I should have anymore. <laughs> um, I put the link down below sometimes I forget to do it you know and people offered to buy me coffee and lunch which my gosh with the price of food today I like greatly appreciate it and I do use it to buy myself coffee I just have to get sugar free so these guys are doing good they're doing good the um the bedding is still on the moist side so I'm not hurting them at all. So this is a trick for you guys. When you guys want to harvest a bin, whatever size it is, you need to dry it out a little bit so that the harvester will work better for you. But you can't dry it out 100%, guys, because if you do, your worms will die. Worms need moisture, 100% moisture to live. Um, they can live as food on bedding, leaves, and like other things like that. But moisture definitely no moisture they will die um but with that being said obviously feed your worms because they'll get skinny so but they're doing good they're doing good so every day i monitor um beddings like this when i'm drying them out just to be on the safe side because you never know and over here i had a banana and they seem to have gone crazy over here so let's see what's going on over here. Yeah, they're still like over here. Look how look how um wiggly they are. They're very healthy. I do see a lot of cocoons. But I got no reading glasses, so I have to bring them down. I call them my magnifiers because 
I see so much better with them like up close. Like little, the red wiggler cocoons are small as it is. But when they start re getting ready to hatch, they get really dark. And sometimes like you can't even see them. Like, look, there's one. Look how little that thing is. It's tiny and he's yellow. There's some in here that are the color of the bedding and yeah, good luck. <laughs> good luck seeing them. I know they're there. I just can't see them sometimes. So I'm getting ready for Thanksgiving. Oh, there's a lot of them over here. I love putting my hand in there and just feeling that squirm. Oh my gosh. I don't know. To me, that's like the best feeling. So yeah, I'll be making my usual feast. All right. Let me go find my tripod and uh, I'll bring you guys along with me today to get all this stuff done. Um, and I got to turn on my TV so I could watch something while I pause you guys. So I do have a TV up on the wall that Joe put there for me and it has all the, you know, Netflix and all those things on it. And uh, I do have a light bug zapper up there the just in case, because, you know, this is a wormery that has like, I, there must be more than a million worms in here and you never know. Like right now I heard something zap and, um, I paused that show because I'm watching, let's see the most haunted castle caught on camera. Okay. <laughs> Halloween's over. I guess we're switching. So I never know what I'm going to watch here. I go down to my subscription button and I just start looking through the list. So if you all have playlists on your uh, channels, I go to the playlist and I just press play and I watch them like that. That way, because my hands are dirty, that way I don't have to keep grabbing like the remote control. And um, someone gave me a good playlist for music on one of my comments and it wouldn't let me save it. So what I did was... I took the videos one by one and I created a playlist with the same videos you uh, you sent me. So thank you. It's an awesome list of great music. So I'll be playing that too. But I also listen to audiobooks. So let me, uh, let me get that going. I'm talking a lot today, guys. I know, I know. All right, guys. So I usually start my videos with the people that I'm most familiar with, like Gardening with Barchuck and AJ's Green Topic. Sometimes I start alphabetical order. I start at the top letter A. And I go down the line, you know, Plant Obsessed, AV's Garden, AV's um, Warm Channel. There's a lot of gardening ones I watch. So I just go down the line. I look to see if you have playlists. I play them. If not, I just click Uploads and it'll play them for me while I listen. Let's do a check-in on the breeders that we set up a few weeks ago. Remember, I have adult red wigglers, one pound. I set them up on the 8th of November. And in three weeks, it'll be the 29th. And they gotta be harvested for cocoons. So here's my worm child that sprouted. So what I do is I just pick it up and just throw it back down. It just creates more food for them. And they're doing well. You're really not supposed to disturb them like this. But just to show you guys for the video, I'll disturb one. Sorry, guys. They're doing good. Breeder bins like this for reproducing of cocoons should be kept at about 80% moisture. They like it more on the wet side. And the bedding doesn't have to be very deep. Maybe two or three inches. Um, another trick is when I harvest this for cocoons, if I add a little more bedding to this, I can reuse it. It's a lot of uh, commercial worm farmers do that. Some won't tell you that, but it's the truth. So they're doing okay. This is the same thing. Now I set these up on these mortar bins because I had them. I had one in my garage and I bought the second one because I like to have two side by side just to compare. This one I push right in newspaper because I just have a lot of it. Look. they're doing well but i'm not gonna dig in so this is coconut coir and pine shavings and then i add some shredded newspaper on top and the reason i add pine shavings is because 
first of all, it's really cheap. And the second best reason is it creates air pockets in there, which prevents the bedding from being compacted and solid because then the worms struggle and can't really get through it. And they will get through it eventually, but then it can go anaerobic, which means it will rot in a bad way. Good, Not good bacteria will be in there and you'll have such a mess. Um, I almost lost worms. I don't know how many videos ago it was. If I remember, I'll link it. If not, you'll have to go find it. Where I almost lost worms because one of my tubs went anaerobic and the smell was horrid. I mean, I literally had to pause my video and walk away a few times because I couldn't handle the smell. So in order to prevent it, just do the proper measurements and do 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 what you have to do to prevent that from happening because guys it is worth it so this this has half a pound with the three weeks i just wanted to compare with half a pound three quarter of a pound and a pound just to see the difference to see what they would do you know and this is the same thing look how they move when i go in there um they have the pine shavings coconut coir and my worm chow so, thank you for all the people that have bought the worm chow. I hope it's working well for you. If it sprouts like mine does, just do what I do. Just pick it up and throw it back, and it's considered extra food for them. My worm chow doesn't always do that. Sometimes it does. It depends on what I use. So, these down here have half a pound. And this, I didn't put pine shavings, pine shavings in it because I wanted to see the difference and just see what happens. So... When you do something like this, you pick the method at the end of this, if you want to call it an experiment, at the end of this experiment, you pick the method that works best for you economically and what you think you can handle better. And then just go with that. Don't be afraid to take a chance. Go with it. That's what I do. And I've done this, you know, um, January 20th will be my 21st year anniversary. Hoo -hoo -hoo -hoo. It is also my daughter's birthday. So they're doing okay. They're doing okay. So let me go um, set this up and get my sifter. So I'm wearing everyone's favorite shirt. The one with the hole in it. <laughs> Listen, I know it's not the prettiest thing. I, I'm aware. And I do have nice clothes. But sometimes, guys, when you have a job like this, and I've told you before, worm farming is very dirty. I'd rather get castings on this than my nice clothes so that's just that's just how it is i'm sorry that sometimes i just don't look professional but this is a farm so yeah that's how it is so this sifter is turning out to be very handy i'm very happy with it you can get it at mimi's wormfarm.com she's a worm farming uh friend of mine she does the same thing I do but she has someone that builds these for her um, you can either go there and get it or you could just make your own but they're very handy this is a quarter inch so I'm gonna go get my worms so to sift the worms out and get the cocoons I'm gonna dump them in this 20 by 15 by 5 bin this is not the one I put the breeders in. I put the breeders on that wall with the deeper bins, usually. But if I use the deeper bin to do this here, then you won't be able to see. So I'm just using this as a holding, as a holding bin. And these are 20 by 15 by five. So they're not very big. You don't really need gigantuan bins. So I'm gonna start on this end because well, it's closer to you. <laughs> um, sometimes I wear gloves when I do this. Sometimes I don't. It depends on what I feel like doing. Sometimes wearing gloves and then stopping the camera and restarting it is just a hassle. So I'll just go with my hands. So I just shake it back and forth. And I'm sorry if this makes noise. It's better than the vibration at 7 o'clock in the morning with my daughter sleeping upstairs. So look at these worms. 
nice looking worms. So I take them and I just put them over here, just as a temporary little holding. Now the cocoons should be down here. And you know, little worms also fall through. And if they do, I'll either put them in with the adults or I'll just let them live there. The bigger ones though, I do pull them out. But it's rare that I find the big one because the big ones usually won't fall through the quarter inch mesh. They'll, um, they'll stay above it so I could dump them out. So let me get going on this. So in a few minutes, guys, look at all the castings with cocoons and young worms that have fallen through in there. Here I have the worms that I have sifted out. And then I got about a quarter of this nursery tub done. And I think I've been at it for uh, 10 minutes, maybe. So, yeah, That's, that was fast. That was fast. All right, next step. All right, I'm going to show you the trick of the century here. This is a way to get worms out so they're completely clean or as clean as you can get them. And it's a two-step process, but it's not difficult. And it's worth doing. So these are the castings that fell the cocoons of little worms, remember. So now I'm going to take my quarter inch sifter and I'm going to put it right on top of the castings. Okay, you following? So now the worms that I sifted, I'm going to take and put it in there. I'm going to put them all in here. Okay, so I'm going to spread this out. So from in here, I'm going to do the light method. The worms are going to go down into the castings. And then when they're all down there and I got this empty up here, we're going to sift the castings and just get clean worms. So I'm going to give them a minute to go down and I'll show you. So this is a, this is a pretty neat trick. And I do it with this or something about this size, but it'd be cool to have a table, a long table with one of these long built on top. And that way I could just take a scoop and go, you know, off the laptop and just get a layer. But this is a smaller version. So I'm just, it's for demonstration. And I want to show you this trick. So this will, um, this is a cool one.
look guys, I'm starting to see the bottom. I don't see worms here. They're all going down. Okay, so the worms have gone down. Empty. So I'm going to lift this. And they're all in there. So now I'm going to go get my sifter. That's a 1 8 screen. And I'll show you. All right. So I have the 1 8 screen here. Let me grab some of the castings that the worms went down into. And let's see what happens. <laughs> Obviously, this will be sifted more if the castings were drier, but that's okay. Look at that. I don't know if you can see. More worms than anything else. And I see loads of cocoons. So if I were to let this dry out a little bit, I would definitely have more of it fall. But look at that. I mean, you can't beat that. <laughs> Is that a cool trick? So then I would scoop this. And you know, worms are shipped best with a little bit of their bedding. It just is. The microbes are there. Everything's ready to go. And weigh it. And then off they go. Now, I would mix more peat moss into this, but I learned many years from a, another worm farmer years ago that he had 99% success rate in shipping when he put a teeny bit of their bedding in with them and then put peat moss on them and then shipped them. Um, I don't know why, but that's what he did. So that's what I do. So this is a cool trick. Now, again, this is better if you had a giant table with a giant mesh that you could just take a spatula and just scoop it off the top. But I just wanted to show you how it works. And that way you can make it the size you want or, you know, do what you need. Also, the bedding that came off of them this is reusable. So I could reuse this again in the nursery tub. So there's a cool trick for you guys. guys so this is the castings that fell again from the sifted worms no worms only cocoons and young babies and i see so many cocoons in there and then these are the worms Ta -da, ta -da! so let me show you what a quarter pound looks like so we got one pound Half a pound and quarter pound is the number four. So that would be a little more than a quarter pound. So when I start selling them, it's going to be in smaller quantities at first, just so you guys could get them. But I don't deplete my uh, my stock. All right, guys. Well, I know this video was long. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe and press that little bell so you don't miss any of my videos. And um, I'll see you all next time. Take care.